As a response to the current COVID-19 pandemic, the ECOWAS Commission and the West African Health Organization, WAHO, have initiated various responses in member states, including the provision of training and essential supplies to strengthen the public health systems in member states in order to foster the fight against the spread of the scourge. This formed part of the message by the Speaker, ECOWAS Parliament, C.D. Mohamed Tunis, on the commemoration of the ECOWAS Day 2020. While felicitating with ECOWAS citizens, he said the fifth legislature shall play its role towards the ECOWAS post-COVID-19 recovery response strategies by collaborating with and enacting policies to support sister institutions in the execution of COVID-19-related programs for the benefit of the citizens of the sub-region. And joining us now is Mohamed Tunis, Speaker, ECOWAS Parliament. Thank you, Mr. Tunis, for joining us. Thank you for having me. What particular message do you want to emphasize to the people today in commemoration of ECOWAS Day? Well, I want to first of all congratulate the citizens of West Africa. We've come a very long way from 1975, when the treaty was signed, and then with the revised treaty in 1993. And since then, I believe ECOWAS has been a success story for West Africa. So I am very, very happy, and I want to wish every one of us a happy ECOWAS Day today. Happy ECOWAS Day to you too. Now, how is the body working to support member states during the trying times of COVID-19 pandemic? Like I said before, it's very, very good. We have made a lot of progress in ECOWAS. The fact that two of our sister institutions, the ECOWAS Commission and the West Africa Health Organization, WAHO, are putting up uh, policies, giving us training, giving support to member states in the form of training supplies to strengthen our public health system. And we also, as members of parliament, are ensuring that we enact laws in our respective countries that we allow the various governments to fight the COVID-19 smoothly and in a very successful way. And as members of parliament, we are not just passing laws, we are also actually taking part in a fight by sensitizing our people across all the constituencies in the various regions. Now, in your earlier speech, you urge governments of member states to be mindful of the need to commit to protecting livelihoods and investment in key sectors and identify ingenious ways of injecting liquidity as a lifeblood to stimulate economies. Could you speak a little more on this for us? The fact of the matter is that the COVID 19, we have never seen this kind before. And we have a situation where the COVID-19 has more or less brought economies to a standstill. And even the possibility of going to recession for this year for most countries. And if we have that kind of situation, then we must begin now to think about targeting our investments in areas that uh, can bring about development for the people of, the, of, of this uh, region that will create jobs for the people. If, for example, if we take agriculture, if we are if we don't invest a lot in agriculture, that will create a lot of jobs for people. Because without jobs at this stage, we are going to ha have it very, very difficult. And why we are talking about integration, the livelihood of people also very, mat very much matter in this uh, kind of situation. That's why in my speech, I reiterated that member states must look at the possibility of reassessing themselves. And like uh, what I heard today, with the Nigerian government, um, I think they are debating or, or their uh, budget in the Senate for a couple of trillion naira. I believe that is simply because we have a situation that we never envisage where in Nigeria that depend very much on oil we now have a situation where the oil prices are down, so they have to reallocate their resources All right. for the benefit of the people of the region. Speaker ECOWAS Parliament, Mohamed Tunis, it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.